Thanks, everybody. Let's see, what am I explaining again, Tom? What was it? Was it a song? I don't remember. About being lost and being fast. Ah, being lost. Um, I talked to a few people today, and uh, there was one woman back there. We spoke, and another woman said, Boy, this isn't a Catholic church, is it? <laughs> I said no, uh, but I was raised in the Catholic Church. Um, I was an older boy for a while and all of that, you know, and I got very scared and I ran out and stopped believing in God for a long time. Um, but I just want to say a few words about what I found to be true without preaching at you or anything like that. Um, there's a lot of identity theft going on in the world, isn't there? And for a while there with me, I didn't know who I was anymore. I was playing in a whole bunch of bands, and you get to be the local rock star, and then you get a little bit bigger. And I'm sure anyone here that's a musician has fell into that. And people are, you don't have to pay to get in clubs, and you got this, and you got that. And after a while, though, you don't know who the heck you are. You really don't. It, it, it's crazy. And then you go from being an entertainer to a, I feel like it's my turn to be entertained. So you get the limos, and you get the guys together, and you start hitting the clubs in the city. And back then it was Studio 54, Palladium, and all of that crazy stuff. And you can only do that for so long before you absolutely blow your bird and go crazy. Um, there's a situation in Scripture, and I just want to read it to you real fast, and then we'll get back to the music. But this guy, Paul, started out as a guy named Saul. And he was one of those type A personalities. And he said something in Galatians. Shh. Not while I'm reading scripture, guys. You don't have to listen to me, but while I'm doing this, shut up. Uh, <laughs> forgive me. He says this. It's a message translation. It's kind of our type of language instead of the harks and these and thous. He said, what actually took place is this. I tried keeping the rules and working my head off to please God. It didn't work. I can relate to that. I couldn't do it, so I threw in the towel. He goes, so I quit being a law man because he was doing everything. He had to cross the T's and dot the I's, you know, one of those guys. So that I could be God's man. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I've been crucified with Christ. And here's the point. He goes, my ego is no longer central. I like that. Because before, if you read it in another translation, he goes, I've been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. What are you talking about? I'm alive. But my ego is no longer central. And he goes, it's no longer important that I appear righteous before you. This is one of those Pharisee guys, man. Pharisee of Pharisees, Hebrew of Hebrews, dad was a Pharisee. You know, it's, he had all his traditions and all his associations were lined up. If he was a hell's angel, he'd be like the president. You know what I mean? He, and I got my club and I got this and I got that. And he goes, it's no longer important I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion and I'm no longer driven to impress God. Sounds weird, right? But then he goes, Christ lives in me. That's the point. The life you see in me living is not mine, but it's lived by faith in the Son of God, and here's the key, who loved me and gave himself for me. And I'm not going back on that. This is the guy who's going to Damascus. He got knocked off his high horse. You know, and he was number one. He was like on the top of his game. And all of a sudden, bam, he gets knocked to the ground by a light, and God starts talking to him. Well, Saul, what are you doing? Why are you persecuting me? And he goes, who are you? And he goes, Jesus, I'm the guy you're persecuting. This was after he was dead. And he was blind. He woke up and he got up off the ground and he couldn't see. Very humbling experience. You get knocked off your high horse, right? I think we got to come to that point where we get backed into a corner and we can't blame anybody anymore and, and accuse people. And we finally say, I need to take a look at myself. You know, and you hit that come to meeting type thing. And you hit the wall and you're like, okay, I give. You know, him saying Christ lives in me, that's like me saying, I'm going to sit in the passenger seat because I don't want to drive the car anymore. I keep getting into accidents. When I told that to my musician friends, they were cracking up. Hey, Chuck, what are you doing now? Well, I sit in the passenger seat. God drives. Oh, boy, what is he smoking? <laughs> it was one of those, but... And then I started playing music in Israel with Joe and, and a few people. And you couldn't dream the stuff up what we were doing. We were a Christian band playing on Israeli military bases in Jerusalem and Adrian too. You know, it was amazing. It was totally amazing. And then I had a story to tell people. It wasn't like I had to preach at people. I just, hey, dude, I stopped playing in the bars and getting people drunk and crazy. 
including myself and now i'm doing this christian rock thing and it's all original music it's great musicians and i'm having the time of my life and and so i can relate to that i couldn't relate to going to church and having a guy tell me shut up you can't talk in here or uh Ginny back there we were sharing last night Ginny's got a lot of ink you know what i mean i love her <laughs> and, and she said i was at a church and it was a funeral and it was I went up to receive communion, and the person doing communion covered their hand over the thing. They wouldn't give it to her because of the way she looked. You know how I wish I was there because I would have went crazy on that person. That's Jesus' table, man. How can, he died on the cross for everybody. How dare you stop somebody from coming to that table? Who do you think you are? That's religion, guys. So there's a difference between religion and relationship. And I'm here to tell you, he meets you right where you are. You don't have to change who you are. Your personality is your personality. I don't have to go around ringing doorbells and giving people watchtowers and stuff. I mean, or wearing the white shirts with the skinny ties and all of that. Please. I'm as crazy as I ever was. Thank God. And look at Vinny. I mean, seriously, I, I, my favorite drummer was Dino Donnelly. And then I see the Vanilla Fudge on Ed Sullivan and you got Carmine bashing those cymbals, man. I was like, oh, I want to do that now. You know, and, and Vinny is solid in the Lord now. What a connection. You got Joe Brennan here, who kind of brought me in. You got Vinny Martell. You got a lot of us here have been in Israel, played music in Israel. And it, like the motivation for playing music changed. Like I said, it wasn't, all we used to do is rev people up, get them crazy. You know, get the girls in, the guys are right behind, man. The club owner makes money, you make money, everybody's happy. Man, that's a sad, after a while, you get tired of it, don't you, Tom? You know, playing for God. Juma Sultan was here with Vinny. Juma played with Jimi Hendrix. He's a minister now. He goes, people keep telling him, what's it like playing with Jimi? He goes, it was awesome. But playing for the Lord is so much more awesome. And he's telling the truth. You get the joy of music back. I'll shut up. Um, <laughs> what I want to tell you, I want to just say a prayer. And... and you can conduct eternal business right now. A lot of times you got the guilt trip that the church puts on you, or the priest puts on you, or the pastors put on you. I'm not picking on any religion, believe me. But there's religion, and then there's that true relationship. He loves you like crazy. Nobody could love you more than God. Nobody. And it's not like you have to have my ducks in a row. He meets you right where you're at and goes along on that journey with you. So let's just bow our hearts for a minute. I'll say a prayer. You say it in your... In your mind, you don't have to raise your hands, it's not a show or anything like that, but I promise you, you're not the sum total of where you've been, you're the direction your feet are pointing in right now. I've been burying a lot of people, man, I'm tired of it. You know, don't wait. Okay, so let's pray, let's bow our hearts. Father, we come to you and we just thank you for this evening. I thank you for everybody in this room. You knit a unique group of people together. Thank you for the musicians. Thank you for our lives. And, and Lord, we get, we get off course. So Father, right now, I don't understand everything, but I do know that somebody's got to pay for your sins. And either we accept that Jesus paid for it, or we got to pay. No brainer. Jesus, please take my sins. Take all of them. And I ask you to come in, and may your spirit join with my spirit and start working in me. I ask you to save me from myself and everything else in this crazy world. And I ask that in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I promise you, if you prayed that prayer, you stepped over the line of faith. And now it's just a journey, man. But he'll take you there, okay?